In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Inkscape to prepare and render logo files in such a way that you will have copies for every possible use you would ever need for a logo design. So jumping right in and getting started, you'll notice I'll be using my own logo as an example here. And generally, I like to use three different formats when I'm preparing logo files. First is the full lockup, which contains the logo paired with the name. Then is the iconic mark, which is just the icon by itself. Then is the word mark, which just has the name by itself. And you'll notice I like to provide various color options for each of these formats. First would be full color for light background, so it has black text. And then would be full color for dark background, so that it has white text. And then would be monotone copies in all black and in all white. And these monotone copies are handy to have because they allow you to use the logo for different things like embroidery or window decals or carving into a piece of wood. So it's a really useful file to have on hand. So getting started here in Inkscape, you'll notice I have my logo ready to go. The first thing you'll want to do is take any text objects and convert them to paths. In my example, I'm not using a text object. These are letters that I just designed using vector paths. But assuming this was a font, what I would do is just select the object and go to path and select object to path to make sure that there are no font files embedded in this document. Uh, if you were to take this file with the font file embedded and open it in another device that doesn't have that font file installed, then the text would not display properly. So it's good to convert all of your text to paths beforehand. And then you want to size the logo at a good enough size. So the size that I like to use is 1280 pixels for the largest dimension. So I'll come up here to my width and height and I'm going to change the width to 1280 because the width is larger than the height. If with your logo, the height is larger than the width, you'd set that one to 1280. So I'm going to set my width to 1280 and press enter and let the height scale to whatever it's going to be. And the reason why I like to use 1280 is because it's a nice happy medium. You don't want the logo file to be too small because then it like loses quality and it, it could become pixelated in certain contexts. And you don't want it to be too large either because sometimes you'll end up with the large file size, which takes up disk space. And a lot of websites and platforms have upload limits for the files that you upload. So you don't want your file to be too large in file size. Now that I have my logo sized how I want it, I'm going to make all of the variations that I need. So I'm just going to press Control D to make a copy. I already have a full color for light backgrounds. I'm going to make this one full color for dark backgrounds. So I'll change the text to white. And then I'm going to duplicate this again. And then I'll make my monotone copies in all black and in all white. And now I'm just going to make sure that each of these variations is grouped together. I'm just going to press Command G or Control G to make that group. And then I will space them all apart evenly. So now we have the full lockup variations ready to go. Now I'm going to make the icon variations. So let me make another copy of this. Let me ungroup it with Control Shift G. Get rid of that. And for the icon, the larger of the two dimensions is the width. So once again, I will change this to 1280. And we're going to end up with a much larger graphic here. So I'll move this over here. We have the full color copy. Now I'm going to make the monotone copies in black and in white. And now I will do the same for the word mark. So let me make another copy of this over here. Let me ungroup this. Let me get rid of the icon so I have just the text. And I'm going to make a color copy of the text as well. So I'm just going to grab my dropper and make this blue. And I want to make this 1280 as well. So let me change the width to 1280. And then I will make my monotone copies, one in black and one in white. And I just want to make sure I have the sizing of everything spaced out evenly. And I'll do this over here as well. I want everything spaced apart evenly. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my document, I'm going to resize my document to fit all of these design elements. To do this in Inkscape, you just got to press Control Shift R, or if you're on Mac, it would be Command Shift R. And if you notice, once I do that, you can't really see the white variations. They're still there, but if you want to be able to see them, you could just press Control Shift D and change the page color to something slightly darker so that you can see that white. And now it's more visible. This doesn't really matter. It's not going to export with this background either way. This is just so we can see the, uh, the white elements there. 
So as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that each of these elements is grouped together into a single unit, because when we use the batch export feature, the files that we export are going to be named by the object property that we assign, the name that we assign to the object property. So you need to have them in groups to do this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this first copy right here, and I'm gonna right click it and go to object properties, and that should open up over here in your menu on the right hand side. And if you notice where we have ID, we have this random letter and numbers. We're gonna change this to the file name that we want the file to be. So for this one, it's gonna be full lockup. I'm just gonna name it lockup light background. Click set. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I'm gonna rename this to lockup dark background. Click set, and then I'll do the same thing with the rest of these. I'm gonna rename this to lockup black, and then lockup white. And we're gonna go through here and do the same thing with the rest of these. So I'll name this icon color, icon black, word mark color, word mark white, so on and so forth. So let me go do that real quick. And once I'm done inputting all of those values, I'm gonna open up a folder where I'm gonna be saving these files and I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna title this logo-files and I'm gonna go into this folder and I'm gonna create separate folders for each of the different formats. So I'm gonna have a folder for the full lockup, another folder for the iconic mark, and then another folder for the word mark. And what I'm also gonna do is create another folder and call this master files. And what I'll do with this folder is I will save this file here in there in case I ever need it in the future. It's good to have, uh, but I'm not gonna do that just yet. I'm gonna export everything and then I'll save it. And then I'll explain why once I'm done doing that. So once we have that set, I'm gonna select the first object here and I'm gonna open up the export menu. I already have mine opened. If yours isn't open, you can access it by going to file and selecting export. And once it's opened, first make sure you have your object selected, then go into the batch export tab, make sure you have selection chosen, and then you should see a preview here of the object you have selected. And if you set the object property correctly, you'll notice that the file name is already set. And then down here, we wanna make sure we check export selected only, overwrite existing files. You can leave that checked if you want. I'm just gonna leave it for now. And for prefix, let's get rid of where it says batch. And over here where it says format, we have the different formats we can include. So the first format we're including is a PNG format, which is useful because it allows you to have a logo with a transparent background. The default is 96 DPI. I'm gonna leave that as it is. And I wanna export other formats as well. So I'm gonna click the add export button and I'm going to choose Inkscape SVG. That will give us an editable copy of this variation of the logo. And then I'm also going to add another export this one will be PDF, which is another editable vector file. And then I'm gonna add another PDF document, only this time I'm going to use a suffix of capitalized AI. And what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna use this to generate an Adobe Illustrator native file because this is common with logo files. Oftentimes clients will want Illustrator specific files. And this is a little shortcut you can use. An Illustrator file is basically just a PDF document with its own proprietary wrapper around it. So I'm gonna export this alternate PDF document and then I'm gonna rename it to .ai from .pdf. And you'll notice here, you can also export a JPEG file I wouldn't recommend using Inkscape to export JPEG files because for whatever reason, Inkscape exports them without anti-aliasing. So they end up having really jagged edges. So what I like to do is I like to use something like GIMP or Affinity Photo to export the JPEG. You can do that afterwards by opening up the PNG file with the application and then just exporting it as a JPEG from there. If you insist on using Inkscape to do this, I would recommend setting the DPI really high to something like 300, and then opening the settings right here and making sure you have the quality brought up to 100. I believe it's set to 90 by default, so make sure you set that 
and then you should be good to go. But for my example, I'm just going to leave this off of here. So let me remove that. And now we want to set the folder to export these files to. So I'm going to click on the folder icon here. Here I have my logo files folder. I'm going to open that and I'm going to go into the full lockup folder and I'm going to select that folder and then I will click export. And if I open up that folder, you can see I have all of the files there. So let me go and do that with the rest of these for the full lockup. Let me select this one. And as long as you have these properties set, you should be able to just click the export button. I would just double check the directory here, make sure it's where you need it to be. It should be by default. You can just click export and do the same thing with this. Click export, select the next one and click export. And if I go back into my folder, you can see there are all of the files. Now, as I mentioned previously, we have this alternate PDF document. We're going to rename this to .ai so we can use it as an Illustrator file. So I'm going to come over here to where it says underscore AI, and I'm just going to change the name of this from .pdf to .ai and press Enter. It's going to ask you if you're sure if you want to do that, and I'm going to click Use AI. And there we go. Now we have an Illustrator file. Now, if you don't see the file extensions and you're using Mac anyway, you can come up here to Finder and go to Settings. And it's this window right here, just tick this box that says Show All File Name Extensions. And there's a similar process for Windows as well. If you go into the settings somewhere, there's a way to turn on the visibility of the file extensions. So now that that is set, I'm going to come over here and rename these ones as well. And now the full lockup variation is all set. So now we could just repeat this process with the other ones. I'm going to choose the iconic mark now, and I'm just going to change the location of the folder. Let me go back to where I previously was. And I'm going to set the iconic mark folder and click export. And then I'll do the same thing with these other variations. I'll just click on them and click export. And if I go back into that folder, you should see there they all are and I can go in and rename those AI PDF documents. I'm just gonna leave them as they are for now. And then finally, we can do the same thing with these files over here. So one final step now that that's done, I'm gonna save this document as the master file. I'm gonna to go to File and select Save As. I'm gonna go into my logo files and I'm gonna to go to Master Files and I'm just gonna rename this to Master File svg and we're going to save this as an Inkscape SVG and then I'm going to save this a few more times in some other formats. So let me save it this time as an EPS document, which is another editable format that can be used with various applications. Uh, I'm going to have to manually type in the new file extension here because for whatever reason Inkscape doesn't update that when you choose that option there on Mac anyway. I don't know if it does that on Windows. I'm just going to leave the default, click OK and we'll do the same thing only for a PDF document. So I'll save this as a PDF, master file dot PDF. Click Save, leave the defaults as they are and click OK. And if you come back over here into your files, you should see you have everything all set to go. And now you can go back into your parent folder and then create a compressed copy of this or uh, like a zip folder. So there we go. Now we have logo files dot zip and that's a file that you can transfer to your clients or upload wherever it needs to go. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.